Hey guys, welcome back to part 3 of this series on ECG analysis. In the previous two parts, we spoke about the physiological properties of myocardial cell, the calculation of heart rate and the 12 day ECG placement by angle of fluid method. Those parts are completely animated and I would highly recommend you to watch those parts before proceeding here. In this part, we'll talk about the calculation, the measurement of cardiac axis by using quadrant method, which I believe is the most efficient way to estimate the electrical axis of the heart by using these two leads, read 1 and AVF. And by the end, I'll also show you a few abnormal rhythms of the heart. So let's begin. In part 2, we spoke about Enthoven's triangle, which I would uh, draw for you once again. This was read 1. This was read 2. This was read 3. And this point, this point, point 0, was Wilson's central terminal. From here we have AVR, AVL, this is AVR, and F, AVF, F for food, right? And if we try to plot the same information in the form of a pie chart, what we have is, this is lead 1, standing right at 0 degrees, now very easy, lead AVF, I'll extend this, read ABF at negative 90 degrees, this is ABL, ABL at minus 30 degrees, read 2 at positive 60, read 3 at positive 120 degrees, read ABR, here we are at negative 150 and this is 1 degree. Right? So what I want to explain is this portion from minus 30 degrees to positive 90 degrees. Minus 30 degrees to positive 90 degrees is the normal axis. This is the normal axis. Okay. So if the heart is functioning properly when you get the ECG strip of your patient the cardiac axis should lie between this portion, minus 30 degrees to positive 90 degrees. But if it lies from minus 30 degrees to mi minus 90 degrees, this is a left axis deviation. If it lies from positive 90 degrees to positive 180 degrees, then it is R80, a right axis deviation. While if it is from minus 90 degrees to 180 degrees, then it is extreme axis deviation, TA. Okay? Now what I want you to do is, just focus on two leads, lead 1, lead 1 and AVF. AVF and this is lead 1 ok just check whether lead 1 is positive or negative and just check whether lead AVF is positive or negative now if lead 1 this is lead 1 so if this is a number line this is 0 this portion is positive for lead 1 so I can say that this part is positive for lead 1 while for AVF, while for AVF, this is AVF, right? This is AVF. So for AVF, if this is the number line, this part is positive for AVF. This part is positive for AVF. Now if we try to plug this information of lead 1 and AVF, this was the positive part for lead 1. This was the positive part for lead AVF. This overlapping zone, this overlapping zone, this one, minus 30 degrees to positive 90 degrees. This is the normal cardiac axis. This is the normal cardiac axis. Now when I say, uh, look at the positivity of lead 1 or look whether lead 1 is positive or AVF is positive, what I want to say is, just check the QRS complex. I'm talking about the QRS complex. If the QRS complex is positive or not. If it is uh, positive, you can say that lead 1 is positive. Okay. Now QRS complex could be positive, negative or epiphasic. How to check that? If this is a normal wave, this is the P wave, this is the QRS complex and this is the T wave. Now this point, this point is known as the J point. This is the J point. From here you can consider baseline with respect to this. Okay. Now
Now beyond J point is the positive deflection at an R wave. And beyond this point, the wave going down, the S wave, this is the negative deflection. Okay? So now you can clearly see that R wave is bigger than S wave. R wave is bigger than S wave. So this is a positive QRS complex. Now, second case, R wave is equal to S wave. So this is equiphase equilibrium. This is an equiphasic wave. And third possible case, T wave. This is the R wave, J point, the S wave. Here, S wave is greater than the R wave. So this is a negative QRS complex. This is the negative QRS complex. Okay, you're getting it? So you need to check in read 1 and ABF whether it is positive or negative. No need to see any equivalence. Now there could be four possible scenarios. Read 1 could be positive, AVF could be positive. Second scenario, read 1 positive, AVF negative. Third scenario, read 1 negative, AVF positive. And the fourth scenario, both of them are negative. Okay, so I'll just represent the four scenarios here. I'll just place this information and tell you the four possible scenarios. So now as I said there are four possible scenarios, four possible scenarios, okay. This is D1, ABS, okay. First scenario, D1 is positive, ABS is also positive. Second scenario, D1 is negative or let us say D1 is positive, we will keep ABF negative. Third scenario, D1 is negative. And ABF is positive. In the fourth scenario, both of them are negative. So these are the four possible combinations, the four possible scenarios, right? Now what will happen? In the first possible scenario, now we know that read one, the positive portion is this part, and ABF is this part, right? So this is the overlapping section from 0 degrees to 90 degrees. Actually, from minus 30 degrees to plus 90 degrees. So this is the normal axis. This is the normal axis. Now the second possible scenario, lead 1 is positive and ABF is negative. So lead 1, positive part, positive part. ABF is negative. This is the negative part. So the overlapping section is this one, this is from minus 30 degrees to minus 90 degrees to minus 90 degrees, this is LED or left axis deviation. The third possible scenario, read 1 is negative and ABF is positive. Having said that, now read 1 is negative. This is negative portion for read 1 but ABF is positive. So, from plus 90 degrees to plus 180 degrees, we have RAD or right axis deviation. Now, last possible scenario, both of them are negative. This is the negative portion for read 1. This is the negative portion for ABF, the overlapping section. This one, extreme axis deviation, minus 90 degrees, 180 degrees. So minus 90 degrees to 180 degrees, positive 180 degrees, this is EAD or extreme axis deviation. So these are the four possible scenarios and by using this method, the quadrant method, you can very easily understand the electrical axis, the cardiac axis of your patient when you look at his ECG strip. I hope uh, it's very clear for all of you.
talking about the rhythm, you need to look at the interval between two RRDs. If they are equal, that is a regular rhythm. Not being equal represents irregularity of the rhythm or represents arrhythmia. And if it is preceded by a P wave, that is a sinus rhythm. If the P wave is absent, it is a non-sinus rhythm. Now for you, I will just draw once again the conduction pathway. Okay. So in the right atrium lies the SA node. Then we have AV node, bundle of this, and working the functions. Okay. Now, when the impulses originate from the SA node goes to the AV node bundle of S and Purkinje fibers, what you get is a normal ECG. What you get is a normal ECG. Okay. The second case, when the impulses are still originating from the SA node, but they are originating and then conducting at a very rapid rate, then you have sinus tachycardia. Okay? Sinus tachycardia. Everything being the same, just at a very rapid rate. Okay. So this is sinus tachycardia. Just look at it once again. Now the third case. Impulses have chaotic random pathway. Chaotic random pathway in the atria. Impulses have a chaotic random pathway in the atria. And this is the most common abnormal pathology, atrial fibrillation, lot of P waves and a QRS complex, lot of P waves and a QRS complex. This is atrial fibrillation, here the, these are not actual P waves, they are also called as F waves, atrial fibrillation. So this is when there are random chaotic pathways in the atria. Now the fourth case is of atrial flutter, impulses roam in a circular pathway. In this case, impulses roam in a circular pathway in the atria. So what you get is an ECG like this. This is known as atrial flutter. And if you see, this is a sawtooth pattern. And this is very easily evident on uh, an ECG when you turn it upside down, a sawtooth pattern, okay? You can see a QRS complex here, right? A QRS complex, impulses are traveling around in a circular, a circular fashion and there is no interval between T and P waves, okay? You can see two and one, so this also represents Atrial flutter with 2 1 AV block, but we'll discuss that later. Now, in the next abnormal rhythm, impulses originate at ventricular pacemaker. Impulses originate at ventricular phase maker. So this is ventricular tachycardia. Okay. Impulses originate at ventricular phase maker. So what you can see is an odd, odd or wide QRS complex. Okay. Odd or wide QRS complex. Just look at this. Now the next case is the most dangerous case that is of ventricular fibrillation. There are, there are multiple pacemakers in the ventricles. Here, there are multiple pacemakers in the ventricles. So you will get an ECG like this and this is the most dangerous case. There is death within minutes. The patient dies within minutes. You also had a block at the ventricle level. Okay, so the impulses could actually not go from here to here, and it started originating from the ventricular pacemaker. Okay, so I hope the information is very clear for you. We can also add information about AV block, 
AB block type 1, type 2, Mobitz 1, Mobitz 2, where there is increased PR interval and all. But for time being, this much information is very sufficient for part 3. Till now, we have understood ECG lead placement, lead placement. It's done. We have understood how those leads work. What are the limb leads? What are unipolar leads? What are bipolar leads? We have looked at rhythm, rhythm, whether it's sinus or non-sinus, that is preceded by a P wave or not. Then we have looked at the regularity of the rhythm, whether it is regular or irregular. Then we have done cardiac axis. Cardiac axis, we have also completed heart rate. Okay. Now in the latter parts, we look at P wave, PQ interval, QRS complexes, LBB, RBB, AB blocks. And for now, we have done this four points. Four points out of the ten points till part three. And I hope it is very clear for all of you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll sign off. Till then, take care, stay safe, stay happy, and spread love and peace. Bye, guys.